Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Waves from Slidenerd here. In the last video, I was talking about how to drive a car programmatically using this problem which we had. This was our first object oriented Java program that we were trying to solve. We had a class car, it had some properties and certain methods. In the last video, we discussed how the add gas method works. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to implement the drive method how to make your car drive programmatically. Now, there are some differences between real world driving and programmatic driving. If you remember, in the real world, you don't really care about how much fuel you have when you start your car, unless you're running very low on fuel. You start the car and you know for sure that somewhere or the other, you will find a fuel refilling station and put some fuel. But in the Java programming problem right now, we cannot do that. The reason because that would make our problem GPS based. We'll have to track where the car is currently, where the fueling station is nearby and then make the user suggestions saying that you should go there, which actually makes a very good idea for an Android app. In this video, in this method drive, what I'm going to do is ask the user how long he wants to drive, calculate the fuel needed for the user's trip or you can say the user's expected trip. Now. If the fuel is sufficient, then we'll actually drive and reduce the fuel. If the fuel is not sufficient, we'll simply tell the user that, hey, sorry man, you don't have enough fuel, you can't make it. And if you remember, in the earlier video, I discussed how to calculate the amount of fuel needed, which is the distance to be covered divided by mileage. For example, here, inside my main method, I'll say something like this. I'll say my car, say 100 kilometers. So I need to pass the amount of distance that I want to drive. So this 100 kilometers or 25.4 kilometers, right? So I'll have a double parameter here so by saying double. The first thing I need to do is calculate the amount of fuel needed. So that's going to be distance divided by mileage. I'm going to store this result in a variable called double. So this will tell me exactly how much fuel I need to make the trip. Then I need to check if the current amount of fuel that we have is greater than the fuel needed right we can make the trip let's say the fuel needed is 20 liters let's say the amount of fuel i have is 15 liters we cannot make the trip right because the fuel needed is more so let's compare this i'm gonna say if amount of fuel is greater or equal to fuel needed then we can make the trip otherwise we cannot make the trip right so here i'm gonna say if this amount of fuel is greater than equals to fuel needed which means i have uh, 10 liters and fuel needed is also 10 liters so we make the trip so i'm gonna reduce the amount of fuel by saying amount of fuel equals the amount of fuel minus fuel needed right because remember after you drive 100 kilometers that fuel is going to reduce so we need to subtract it from the total amount of fuel we have and then we can also print a message to the user saying you traveled distance kilometers. Otherwise, we cannot reduce the amount of fuel and we'll simply print a message which says you do not have sufficient fuel for the cover for the trip. Now, this is not close to the real world drive method. But like I said, this would do just fine for a simple program. Let's actually run this by saying my car to drive 100 control S shift F6. You do not have sufficient fuel for the trip. Okay. So how about 10 kilometers? Control S, Shift F6. Now there is one thing we need to do. We need to actually give a value for this mileage. So here I'm going to go and say my car dot mileage equals to say 15, 15 kilometers per liter. So now let's see Control S, Shift F6 it says you traveled 10 kilometers. Okay. How about 30 kilometers? Control S, Shift F6, travel 30. How about 2000 kilometers? I bet that's not going to happen. So you see, now when you say drive 2000 kilometers, it says you don't have sufficient fuel for the trip. That means it's working perfectly. So in this video, I've shown you guys how to make the first simple object oriented Java program, how to solve this problem, the object oriented Java, how to think about variables, methods, how to think scenarios very close to the real world and so on. So in the next video, I'll further continue my discussion on object oriented Java. In the meantime, 
If you guys like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.